All right, you guys, welcome back to the World GPS News. Today, we have a bit of a different kind of content. So basically, I just got the FTTH fiber to my home, and now I have one gigabit in download. Now, I'm in Italy, so it's called FTTH here, and basically, it's from Team. Now, what happens is the modem I had is not really, like, it's a Team modem, okay, it's decent, but I wanted to get a better modem. So I bought this guy. It's an Asus DSL AX82U, and basically, it's, a very high-end modem router so if you have FTTH actually you can just buy a router now basically the difference is if you already have a modem you can plug a router as waterfall to it okay but if if you want to replace your modem you will need a modem unless you have FTTH so this guy is gonna be good for fiber to the cabin FTTC as well and for normal uh, ADSL uh, but I chose um, to go with this guy, mostly because uh, my parents wants to use the, um, the phone, the physical phone, so I needed something like this. And it's a very high-end model, uh, I paid around 240 bucks for it, but uh, you can also have the 40 bucks cheaper model, which is just a router, and I actually recommend you get that one if you have a normal fiber FTTH 1 gigabit like I have. So, I mean, we're going to just do a quick unboxing, and then replace my modem and see the difference in performance. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so here we are testing LAN performance. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so as you can see, we have a pretty good LAN performance, even with a standard modem that's to be expected because, you know, it just acts as a switch pretty much, so there's not really much to be lost. Uh, but we will see if we can improve it. Now let's see on mobile using the Wi-Fi. All right, guys, so here we are. Let's test the mobile performance. It's connected to the 5 gigahertz network. So let's see how it actually does. Okay, now let's see how much it gets to, but I think it's gonna be under 200 megabytes per second. And yes, it is. Now let's see how the upload is. Very low ping, by the way. Let's open this box, guys. Let me get straight into it. Okay. Now let's see what we have inside. So we have a quick start guide, that's good. And then we have an American plug. We're not gonna need this one. Then here we have, have the actual model. It's pretty good. First look, now of course, now it doesn't have the RGB, but pretty good on the back side as well. The connectivity is really good. Here we have the DSL port, here we have our four LAN switch. This is WAN, one port, the power switch, really useful in modems. Most modems don't have that. Um, and then we have the actual adapter, which is also nice. And we will have to mount it with our plug. There we go. It's very good. I like the design a lot, actually. And now they also gave us two Ethernet cables. This one should be a DSL cable. So if you have regular internet and this one is a regular Ethernet, which supports the latest standard, this is really good actually. And then here we also have the possibility to register our product, which we will do. And then we have a couple extra adapters in case you wanna convert stuff. BDSL splitter is to use voice. And then we have this guy, which is used for the phone and the DSL. So in case you need it, those are all included. That's very useful. Let's actually plug it and see how it goes. All right, guys, so we got it configured. This was the old modem. So it was still a decent modem, actually. But I think it looks pretty good. Then we can configure the LEDs in the app. And now it's running. So let's take a look at the test and get on with the conclusions. All right, guys, now here we are with the conclusion. It might be a bit different than what you were expecting because as you can see, we have actually a different router here, which is the TUF AX5400. Why do I have that here? Well, this router is great, honestly. I tried it, I liked it, but it's not for me. If you have an FTTH connection, I actually recommend this router. It costs 100 bucks cheaper, okay? And it's the exact same router. Now, as you can see, AX5400, AX5400, they kind of gave it away, but it's literally the same processor inside the router. They are the exact same. What changes are a couple of things. Now, I want to go over all the differences, okay, because there are actually quite a bit. Uh, but in short, this one, it's also good for FTTC or a normal ADSL. So if you have a copper cable from the cabinet to your home, you can actually use this one and just connect it here. While this one is a router, it's not a modem router, but if you have FTTH, 
which it's the exact same. They have the same range. This one has less antennas, but it's actually the same. I tested exactly the same range and they have the same features. They both support AI. Well, they have a ton of features now. I really can't remember them all, but basically they allow you to set how much uh, width of your connection you give to each device. Uh, you, you can prioritize your gaming computer. You have an integrated VPN. You can uh, do the ASUS mesh system to have more routers and extend your Wi-Fi into your house. I will actually test that and report to you because I think I will need that. But anyway, they are very similar. The only difference is this port pretty much. Now this one, the DSL AX82U actually comes with also those cables. Let me show them to you. These ones are for your phone. If you wanna use the phone in your house, you will need those ones because basically this is a splitter. And so what you do is you plug this right here. Like your internet connection enters here where the line is written. Then you plug this one into the modem. This gives you internet. And then this one goes to your phone. Some people still use their phone. Like my grandparents still use their phone. So I couldn't give this to them. So they would need something like this. But again, a couple extra features, but it's pretty much, trust me, the only difference is the aesthetic. This one looks better. The RGB is great, I loved it. It's really well built. It feels really nice, really premium. It's the best modem I've ever had in my hands. Really nice, really light also. And the support for DSL and the phone. And then they're the, the exact same router. So save the 100 bucks if you don't need the phone and if you don't care about the aesthetic. This is the conclusion. Pretty much though, getting to the, the actual results, like the difference coming from a normal modem I had the team modem is insane. Basically, this guy gives me 900 megabytes, 930 megabytes to the computer out of my one gigabit connection. So it's pretty much the 100% coverage. I get 300 megabytes in upload, 930 in download. And the Wi-Fi of this guy is insane. Now, I have a pretty big house. And basically, if I go on the furthest point possible, which is like on another level of the house, I'd say around 100 meters, maybe less. I'd say at least 60 meters away from the modem while being on another level of the house. It gets 250 megabytes in download using Wi-Fi 5 gigas. Of course, Wi-Fi 6, that's the catch. It's really good. Uh, if you can use Wi-Fi 6 compatible devices, use them, they are great actually. Aside from that, why did they actually make the switch? Well, first of all, because this one was 100 bucks extra, and this is the main reason. But there is also the second reason. So this modem out of the box is built to be used with DSL, so with your normal internet connection, not, not with fiber to the home. It's really tricky to set. It took me around half an hour to set properly. Again, it's, it's really easy if you know what to do, but if it's your first time, it's gonna take a while. This one, it took me five minutes. Another problem that this one had is the software. So basically you can access your software. Um, there is a web page, it's like modem.asus.something. You can just write it in, in, in your browser to access the settings. And basically this one, I think it's because it's actually slightly newer, but it's completely different and it's much better. Uh, way less buggy, the software update was faster, took less to refresh. So again, it was better. Plus this one, I think due to the functionality to actually limit the bandwidth, which is very useful. But again, due to that probably, it was actually limiting the performance of on my main computer to around 300 megabytes in download and 300 megabytes in upload. I still haven't figured out why that was, honestly, but it was performing worse uh, if using a cable than my original modem. So that, coupled with the buggy software, made me pull the trigger to the switch. Now, you also have this modem right here, same one, but not a modem, just a router. It's called, I think, the AX86U or AX82U, but without DSL, DSL means modem. If you got that one, it might be better, but I haven't tried it. I personally think this one is the best bang for the buck. And I honestly think if you have a fiber connection and if you need high coverage Wi-Fi, and if you do intensive stuff like streaming, gaming, uploading videos, stuff like that, uh, I think it's worth the buy. I think for 150 bucks, this one is good. I don't know how we'll title this video actually, because like I started and I want to do just a quick review of this one. Uh, but then I didn't want to make just a bad review because it's a good modem actually. Um, so it will be, I think, a comparison or detailing my experience uh, on in improving my Wi-Fi after getting a fire to the home connectivity. But anyway, I hope it was helpful. And uh, again, just to recap, exact same modem, better aesthetic, has the support for the phone and DSL, better price, better software.
buy this one unless you need this thing or unless you want the aesthetic but again this one looks good as well so that's about it take care guys see you in the next one peace okay here we are testing the connection after the modem upgrade and well it's basically the same i mean lan connection really the modem just acts as a switch so not much change but i have a very quick report to give to you basically um we got a slight decrease which is an improvement on the ping uh, in games i got about five milliseconds on average less so i can definitely recommend it um if you need it for gaming i think their technology is pretty good now i don't have any kind of their mesh or bandwidth limiter on but like just using it just straight out of the box it slightly improves your ping and it's really good and here is the wi-fi test afterwards this is where we actually see the biggest improvement like i've seen speeds up to 500 megabytes when i have just the phone connected right now we have about four devices connected to the wi-fi so it's really impressive to get 350